Most people are cognitivists when it comes to metaethics. Are you? If so, do you know what kind? In this video, we're going to explore the cognitivist side of our metaethics map, so we're ready to begin evaluation next lesson. The most important way cognitivists disagree is on the nature of moral truth. Is it objective or subjective? This is the difference between cognitivist realism and cognitivist anti realism. Realism is the belief that good refers to something out there in the world. Good exists independently of us. It's not the creation of anyone, but rather we discover it as a fact about the universe. It is real. Anti-realism is the belief that good does not refer to anything independent of us. Morality is created by human beings, or other beings, rather than a discoverable fact about the universe. Morality is mind-dependent. It is made up. Perhaps the simplest way to remember this distinction is that realists believe morality can be true objectively. Anti-realists believe morality can be true only subjectively. Before more clarification on anti-realism, let's check our understanding. Which are realist and which are anti-realist positions? Pause to give you some time to think and decide in your answer, and focus on being able to give an explanation for why for each. Let's check to see if you got these right. The first two are anti-realist, as they are claiming that morality is only subjectively true, either based on someone's opinion or society's opinion. There's nothing objective here. However, number three and four are saying what makes something wrong is an observable fact about the world either relating to pain or function. Notice neither of these are dependent on anyone's opinion. If something causes pain, it's wrong. If something goes against our function, it's wrong. Wrong for everyone, objectively. It's a fact we can observe about the universe. It is a realist position in metaethics. What about the last one? It is actually anti-realist. Now, that surprises some students. If it surprised you, can you now think why it might be anti-realist? This is an example of divine command theory. Whatever God commands is what is good. Now remember our definitions. Realism is saying morality is objective and not dependent on a mind. It exists independently as a fact about the universe. Well, this is dependent on a mind. God's mind. If God changes a command, then morality changes. It's not tied to a fact about the universe. It is subjective as it's based on God's view of morality. In a sense, God can make it up. This makes it an anti-realist position. Before we move on, let's just formalise these three anti-realist positions so you can take notes. This view is called individualism. Moral statements can be true or false, but only in how they compare to any individual's personal morality. You can see why this limits moral claims to being subjectively true rather than objectively. This view is called cultural relativism. This is the view that each culture has its own norms and values, so we can say whether something's morally good or bad in relation to that culturally dependent standard. But nothing is objectively morally good or bad for all cultures. Last, we have divine command theory. Morality depends on God's commands. When in the story of Abraham, God asked him to kill his son, it became morally good for Abraham to do so. When he's offered a sheep to kill instead, it became morally wrong for Abraham to now kill his son. Morality can change depending on God's commands, making it subjective. We have now examined anti-realism. Let's now examine realism in more depth. With perhaps the exception of divine command theory, traditionally much of moral philosophy has assumed some form of realism, that the good is objective. There are two main types, naturalism and non-naturalism. Naturalism has been the most widespread view in moral language, as this is the basis for many of the most successful normative ethical theories. Utilitarianism, natural moral law, situation ethics and virtue ethics are all naturalistic when it comes to their meta-ethics. Naturalism is the view that what makes something objectively good is how it relates to something empirically observable. In other words, moral knowledge is known a posteriori. For example, in utilitarianism, an action is good if it produces the greatest amount of happiness for the greatest number. This is an objective fact about the universe we can gain knowledge of through observation, a posteriori. Or in natural moral law, an action is good if it aligns with our function. Our function we discover through observation, a posteriori. Non-naturalism, on the other hand, is a view that what makes something objectively good is known a priori. 
I'll give you a little more info here on two types of non-naturalism. One that relies on intuition and one that relies on reason. Intuitionism, put forward by philosophers like G. E. Moore, stated that we can gain access to objective moral knowledge through our intuitions. We can all know what is right and wrong. We all have gut feelings about morality that do not require experience. These feelings are inbuilt. They are a priori. When we see something wrong, we just feel it to be wrong. This is intuitionism. Kantian ethics is another example of non-naturalism, as Kant believed we could discover moral maxims, rules, through reason alone, a priori. Recall he proposed the principle of universalizability, part of his categorical imperative, which was a method for identifying morally good and bad actions that did not require observation. He said an action can only be good if it was possible to imagine everyone doing it without creating a performative contradiction. This shows that morality is knowable from reason alone. To summarise, naturalism means objective morality is known a posteriori. For example, utilitarianism, natural moral law. Non-naturalism is the view that objective morality is known a priori, like intuitionism or Kantian ethics. Let's display these positions with the extra detail we now have on our map. Pause if you want to have a closer look. If this video is helping you at all, please let me know in the comments. Genuinely, feedback is appreciated. Or if you have any questions, I'll try and respond. Right, can you now draw that map from memory? Try it a few times till you get it locked down. It'll help you visualize how everything pieces together. Pause and have a go at that now. So, you confident on these definitions? Okay, then where do I fit on this map? Number one, I believe morality is meaningful and that morality is objective and known from experience. What am I? I'm a cognitivist, realist, naturalist. Number two, I believe that morality can be true or false. I believe it's true or false based on how it compares to my own personal morality. What am I? I'm a cognitivist, anti-realist, individualist. Number three, I'm a natural moral law theorist. So I believe we can learn what's objectively true or false based on our function. What am I? I'm a cognitivist, realist, naturalist. Number four, I believe morality is meaningful, but we cannot gain knowledge about morality from experience. Instead, we all have access to objective moral knowledge through our intuitions. What am I? I'm a cognitivist, realist, non-naturalist. And in this case, I'm an intuitionist. Number five, we can check to see if something is moral or not by checking the moral standards of the culture we're currently in. But different cultures have different rules. What am I? I'm a cognitivist, anti-realist, cultural relativist. Number six, I do not think moral language is meaningful. What am I? Okay, a bit mean because it's not here, but hopefully you remember, I am a non-cognitivist. More on this in another video. And lastly, number seven, I believe that morality can be true or false and we can discover this by comparing our actions to God's commands. What am I? I'm a cognitivist, anti-realist, divine command theorist. I hope you managed to get most of those correct. If you didn't, go back and try again. I'll see you in the next video.